Great. Hi, um, this is Melinda Vallant. I'm going to go through setting up a render, a final render in Revit 2022. Okay, so I've got my model open. Uh, the next thing you need to do is, uh, if you haven't already, set up a camera view. Now, if I look at my project browser, you can see that I've set up two camera views and I've got the third, which is a, the dynamic, just 3D view. So if I uh, went to one of these camera views, you should be able to see a particular angle of the your building. Um, now, just to set up, just a reminder how to set up a camera view. If you go to floor plan and go to like ground floor or level one or something like that, that is where your camera is going to be sitting on that level. Then you can go up to view and under 3D view, you've got camera. Uh, have a think about where you want that person to be standing looking at a space. If I wanted to be looking at this room inside here, which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to place myself there and I'm going to move those visual rays in the direction I want to be looking. And I remember I have to pull those visual rays beyond the space in which I need to look because if I stop here, I'll only see half the couch. So I need to extend it further out so it doesn't cut off anything. Now you can see it's probably not um, showing as much as I want it to. So while I'm still in edit mode, I can pull these edges out just a little bit. If I pull them out too far, it starts to get very distorted and a bit strange. And also there's, have a think about, have a look at the, what you're looking at and see, okay, is there a little bit extra that I need or have I got too much of something? So if I've got something that shows a huge white space or a huge empty area, you can pull that a little bit tighter. So it just captures, you know, the space that feels like, you know, it would create a nice render. Now at that point, um, I've got a nice frame on the space, but I'm just looking at it in outlines. So you can change it right down here to uh, consistent colors, but that is not a rendered camera view. That is just a preview of what it might look like, okay? So to actually create a rendered camera view, you actually have to go under the view tab, you'll see the little render teapot the teapot is one of those universal icons for render. The teapot is also down here on your uh, little bar down the bottom. So show render dialog. Okay, so you can click either one and it'll bring up the same box. So it brings up this render information box. Okay, now if you just click render, it will go with the default settings in there, which is a draft quality, so it won't be a high resolution. Just remember the higher resolution, the slower the render. So if you're just quickly checking something, keep it on draft view. Um, I recommend high at the very best level, unless you've got a really, really super fast computer with an impressive graphics card, because some of these can take more than an hour to render if you've got a lot of reflections. Okay, so best, it can be very slow if your computer is a just, you know, a basic computer. Um, so, you know, for a quick check, you can go on medium or draft. Let's just do a medium. Now the resolution, this normal screen resolution you're looking at is actually more or less either 72 dots per inch or 96 dots per inch. It is actually not that high a resolution. So if you print it off, just a normal screen um, image, it actually wouldn't be print quality. Print quality is at least 300 dots per inch or higher. So if I wanted, if I intended to print this, I would go to a printer resolution and I'd go to 300. But just remember, we're not actually printing this. You're going to be putting it in your portfolio. And so we can stick with screen, but just be aware that if you were going to print it off, you would change to printer and you'd change to at least 300 dots per inch to get the resolution you need. The width, it's as given. So what the bounding boxes of this view uh, indicate your pixel width. 
So you can't change that unless you change the, the box around your view. I'm happy with what it is. Now, the lighting is very important as well. There are a few settings for lighting. I am inside, I am inside my building and I also have lights in the ceiling. So if I set this just to exterior sun only, it means that those lights would be off and the only source of light would be through this window. If you have no windows in a room, it's gonna be completely black unless you have some crack of light coming in from somewhere. So exterior sun only is okay if you've got a lot of um, windows. In fact, it's, it's quite nice. If you've got a lot of windows, it's a good one. Um, exterior sun plus artificial. Uh, make sure that the, you know, you're basically turning those lights on in the room. So once I've chosen my lighting, um, you can change the background. Uh, you can obviously choose an image from your computer or you can just set it to uh, one of these um, preset settings. Now, if you hit render, it will start that process of creating a nice render for your image. And once you get that final render out, these ones down the bottom, uh, see how dark it is with only the settings I've chosen. Um, you've got image adjust exposure, which you can tweak the light settings a little bit um, with that. Uh, you can also export the image. So I, if you were um, create a JPEG or an image that you're happy with, please use the export button right there to take that image out of Revit and uh, place it into your portfolio. So there it is now. Now it's super dark. Now, if I go adjust exposure, you can see shadows. I can try and make it lighter, but there's barely enough, hit, hit apply, there's barely anything to capture. So it's just, I'm not gonna be able to get much out of that. So I really need, instead of exterior, I need to go for interior sun and artificial and just see what a difference this makes. You'll see that uh, it's much more sympathetic to interior lighting um, as a render. It will immediately look better. <clears throat> Not super bright, still kind of dark, um, but at least we've got a slightly <laughs> less pitch black space. You'll notice that those lights I've put in need to be brighter. So I can go in and adjust those specific lights. If I get close to what I am looking for, I can go adjust exposure and then export it. So let's see, this is okay. I think it's still too dark. So I probably, if I go adjust exposure, I can get a little bit out of it. So I can maybe sort of try and brighten it up. Uh, exposure value brighter, apply. You can see that's moving that fly. Oh, too bright. Okay, so the slider wants to jump around a bit. Okay, so it does something. The saturation's a little bit crazy at that point. So I might just down that a little. Okay, maybe more. Now it's okay. It's it's not fantastic, but you know, if I was uh, you know, happy enough with that, I could go export and I can save this off now. I can save this to my computer. So you know, one I can then I can go and put this camera view into the portfolio. Okay, that's it uh, for adjusting your uh, um, rendering out views. Um, just note that you can go and select. If I went back into my model, see if I can select. If I hit Tab, I could probably select that light. No, not from there. So I need to go back and maybe on the ceiling, I go to the ceiling, I should be able to select one of those lights and I can go into edit type and go down and actually make it brighter. So it's only, it's two, 200 watts. It's just not bright enough. I'm gonna go 2000, see what happens. So, okay, 
And if I go back into my view and hit render, it should be, and I've got interior sun and artificial, hit render, it should be brighter. Okay, the once that's come out, you can still adjust exposure and you can still export that. So it's much brighter. It's a little bit too bright and it's a little bit too saturated. So I could make some adjustments there. So it's important to test uh, all your rendering that, you know, your output to see what kind of little adjustments you need to make. Also, I might want to put a tree outside the window. I might want to change the material on this sofa, things like that. Okay, that's all for today's tutorial.